fall off my chair. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to our live this Saturday. Um, I was just trying to watch watch Amy because she was falling off her chair. <laughs> <laughs> How are you all this week? Isn't it a lovely sunny day? It's great today, isn't it? I'm just going to refresh my page. Do say hello if you're there. Let me know if you're where you are. Um, and say hello. Let me just scroll down. I know you're getting used to me doing this now. Oh look, happening now. I'm just going to scroll past my face. And then I can see who's there. So yeah, say hello. What have you been up to this week? Um, oh, why is it not showing me anything? I'm just going just gonna to refresh it and do it again. <laughs> So we've had a busy week. I've been um, obviously we've got the move, uh, we've moved to the new sewing room, and uh, it's been the decorators are in this week, so it's all coming together. It's frustrating because I can't actually unpack properly until the decorators are finished, but uh, we're getting there, getting ready to reopen on Saturday. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Oh, morning, Coral. How are you? Morning, morning, Susan. Hi, Joe. Thank you for joining us again this week. Oh, that's Amy saying hello. <laughs> and then you can see all the comments. So yes, that's what I've been doing this week is basically being up and down to Midhurst, uh, dealing with decorators and getting the Wi-Fi sorted and the um, window cleaners in, all those sort of things you have to do. Sorting out the gas and the electric and everything like that. So very glamorous life I've had this week. Morning, Jilly, how Hi, are you? Jilly. How's your week been? Amy's been busy making masks, obviously. So thousands of masks going, <laughs> <laughs> and I think the government have said about when they're when they're in shops now, so it might be even more. Morning, Margaret. How are you? What have you been doing? Cutting out the pattern pieces for the Jessica blazer. There are quite a lot of pieces, but you don't need all of them. Um, if you, you've got the video, haven't you? Uh, there are a lot of pieces because they give you all the pieces for the interfacing and things like that. So um, that's why they feel like there's a lot of pieces. Good pattern though. That is a great pattern. You saw. I love my Jessica yeah, blazer. Yeah, were you wearing it last week? I think uh, you were. The week before. before. Yeah, so, one of the yeah, weeks. Yeah, <laughs> Amy's Jessica blazer, and it is a great pattern. Hi, nanny. Hi, mum. How are you today? Mum came over to our house this week. That was the first time, wasn't yeah, it? Since, since Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, it was my birthday on Wednesday, so we had a little birthday dinner, and mum and my sister Emma came over. We had a lovely day. It was really lovely. Almost felt a bit normal, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did a bit. Um, is he adjusting bed linen and PJs? Oh, okay. She said, don't ask I won't, I won't ask about that then, Julie. <laughs> Morning, Pat. How Hi, are Pat. you? Oh, gosh, it's so warm in here today. I can feel myself. It's sweating. so hot in here, yeah. And we're going rushing around for the last fan. minute today, weren't we? Um, Morning, Suzanne. How are you? Is it lovely in Guernsey today? Oh, I had a lovely birthday. Thank you. She's been doing lots of socialising and nearly finished the, the Soho 7T dress. Oh, great. I'm looking forward to that. It's quite large, so some more treasures needed. Oh, that's interesting. I look forward to seeing that, Suzanne, because I'd like to sit over talking last week. I've got that pattern, so <laughs> thanks for testing it for us. <laughs> that's great. Um, so that's what we've been up to this week. And I also saw, Suzanne, you made that lovely Meg's Atelier wrap dress. I love that fabric. That's such a pretty fabric that you made it in. And Margaret made um, a, a twirl for some palazzo pants for her daughter. That must be a wearable twirl, though, Margaret. They were nice. That was nice fabric. Yeah, it looked cool. Yeah, and the lovely, or lovely tunic with that border print fabric. How are you getting on with the ruffle? Because um, Margaret made the tunic from the tunic bible, and it's a lovely um, option to do a ruffle. But everyone who's made it, we've had tricky getting the collar to stand up quite as well as it looks in the pictures. So there's a few tips that I gave you. Uh, oh yes, morning Jane. How are you? Looking Hi, forward Jane. to seeing you at the weekend. Hi Susan. Oh well, there you go. So Susan's going to make this set the so House seven dress as well. Hi Janet. How are you? Hi Janet. Thank you very much. Uh, she started cutting out the daffodil dress and pants for Lisa Comfort. Oh, oh, for her godson six month old. Oh, lovely. Oh, that would be really nice. Look forward to seeing pictures of those as well, Janet. I know Janet had cocktails on her birthday. Though. We had cocktails this week, but we had we had um, we got takeaway from the Giggling Squid in Chichester on Saturday and they on Wednesday and they do um, little bottles of cocktails, didn't they? And they yeah. were quite good. They had yeah, delicious. When you did order the takeaway, you can order cocktails as well. Oh, Margaret's taking the ruffle off and bringing it to the week, bringing it to the sewing school on the weekend. We'll sort that out the weekend, Margaret. Don't you worry. A few things we can do. It's really frustrating that ruffle because in the in the book it looks so cool, but as soon as you start to move, it sort of flops open. So there's lots of things we can we can play about with. And I look forward to seeing you at the weekend, Margaret. That's exciting. 
Um, what else did I see? Uh, oh, Maggie finished her couture jacket this week. OMG. Oh, I don't know if you saw that on the Mid Her Sewers page. It was, I'll post it on Instagram as well, actually, because it was she did it using the um, online class that I did when I made my jacket, and she did such a good job. It looks really lovely. Beautiful. So some of you will have seen that on the Mid Her Sewers. Well done, Maggie. Really good. Um, with Justine, uh, Justine uh, took inspiration from The Great that she's been watching uh, on Hulu channel, isn't it? Uh, and she made, she's drafted a pattern um, uh, inspired by Catherine on The Great and uh, she made a little top, really nice, really pretty. Uh, and Sally has finished a Cedo top, closet case pattern. Yeah, that was cool. I've got yeah. that pattern, but I haven't made it yet. It looks really nice. She said she mm. lengthened it, so it's a bit short for her. Mm, I think um, I would as well. Yeah, it's, it looked really nice, didn't it? So you've all been really busy sewing this week. I feel I'm desperate to sew. I'm desperate to make myself something. I'm really looking forward to um, when the uh, sewing room opens again. That's a delivery. Oh. I'm just going to run away. All right, the doorbell just went. Nathan's got a delivery, so she's going to run around the back of the house, around the front <laughs> to get delivery. Oh, Suzanne, your Linton's arrived. Fantastic. So did Mag Maggie's jacket inspired you now? You can see what you can, what you can achieve. I'm looking forward to our couture class in September, October. That's going to be such fun. Really great. Just really looking forward to being back in the sewing room with you all, actually. And sewing, which will be fantastic. What else have you all been up to this week? You may have got this, you may have got this month's Sew Today magazine, uh, which arrived this week. As you know, I, I write for this magazine, and I was very proud that my name's on the front cover of this, this month. Is that your delivery? Yeah. Oh, it's my earrings. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Uh, Julie, there's a special link to Mid Her Sewers page. Um, I'll put one you can up. Just yeah, search you should it. be able to just search Mid Her Sewers and, on, Facebook. Uh, on Facebook and then just request to join and we'll yeah we'll let you join. Morning Catherine, how are you? Hi Catherine. Uh, button suppliers. Okay, for buttons I would say the best one is the Textile Garden. Um, they have really lovely buttons, all sorts of fancy things. I would definitely say the Textile Garden for um, really nice buttons. And there is one called Totally Buttons that does loads of buttons. They do all the very basic ones up to fancy ones. But um, I'd say Maggie at Textile Garden has the most unusual um, buttons. So I would definitely go with her for your blazer. I've got my, my blazer buttons from Textile Garden, actually. I think I've got them in New York. I think you got them in New York. Might have done. McCulloch and Wallace do good buttons. <coughs> I don't know if they have them on their website. But uh, Maggie's much more set up. So, yeah, so today magazine. Go back to me. <laughs> yeah, I've got my name on the front cover this week. And there's an article I did on essential sewing tools. Um, but it's, it's a really good magazine this month. There's lots of great articles. Terry Fox has done a great one. Um, uh, Di Kendall, uh, Wendy Gardner. So there's lots of really good articles. Uh, and then lots of um, inspiration from the new collection of patterns as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a great. It's got better and better, this magazine, actually, for um, inspiration. And for seeing all the new patterns, well, that's a nice. Oh, I see. Pat wants to join the Midhurst Sewers. You have been approved, Pat. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's also an admin, so you can join right now. Yeah. <laughs> see how many we can get. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Susan, you haven't had your copy yet. It's good this month. It is good. There's lots of uh, lots of good things. Yes, Margaret, the cloth house has closed its shop. Sadly, on Berwick Street, I saw that this week as well. They're just going to do their online. Um, which is a shame because it's one of, one of my favourite shops to visit. I thought it was just had such a lovely atmosphere, didn't it, the Cloth House? And Pat's saying thank you <laughs> for approving. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that is really sad, actually. Um, oh, the got another one. Oh. You've been approved, Jilly. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, yes, the micro serrated scissors are on the website. They're called micro serrated and they're, by, they're, they're, they're the Kai blades. They're really good. The, the silk and things like that. Yeah, they are. If you can't find them, let me know. But yeah, they should be there. I don't see why not. Um, yeah, the micro serrated scissors are the ones I use for cutting silk. They're also good for lining uh, because they pull the fabric towards you. So often with very fine fabrics, um, the fabric gets pushed away. Morning, Bonnie. How are you? Hi, Bonnie. How are things in New Jersey today? What's the weather like out there at the moment? Is it hot out there today at the moment? Would be, wouldn't it? We were thinking we would we should have been on the cruise on the way back now, shouldn't we? We should have been. Yeah. Yeah, Suzanne, I am. Um, I'm sorry, I've been a bit delayed on admin due to mask business. But, and, also, um, and I'm waiting for Cunard. I can't get through to them. Their phone keeps cutting out. So I'm waiting. I'm on a list for them to call me back. Mm. So um, you will get the info as soon as I have it. 
Yeah, they did. They, they did a sort of verbal confirmation of all the bookings, and they were supposed to come back with the written ones, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, and, and they haven't done. And they haven't. So Amy's been trying to chase them, and yeah, you have to just join a join a list for them to call you back. So otherwise, you're on the phone all day yes. with them hanging up on you. Janet's just watching uh, Mrs. America. Oh, is that good? That's on my list to watch. Yes. Mrs. America. It's what's it early seventies American fashion? Oh, that'd be great. Well, this is it's raining in, in America at the moment. Oh, in New York. So yeah, I need to watch that one. Haven't we watched much TV at all this week? Have we? I don't know what have we watched this I week. I started gosh? watching Big Little Lies. Oh yes, because I haven't seen it and I really yeah. wanted to. Mm. So yes, other news we've got this week. Star Starlog about put out a new pattern this week. Did you see that? I bought it already. I think it's called the Ellie of dress. Of course you have. Of course I have. It was really nice. It's just it's a jersey dress with a quite plain um, top and then a sort of wrapped skirt with a flouncy bit on it. <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah, that's a new, nice new pattern they brought out this week. Um, Suzanne's watching. You watching Mrs. America, Suzanne? Well, while she's sewing. What are you sewing at the moment, Suzanne? Oh, the other oh, the Sew House um, Seven Tea Dress, aren't you? Uh, yeah, so the other, other news is that um, we talked last week about the fact that Blueprint have been taken over by TN Marketing so that all the lifetime classes are safe. Well, TN Marketing have decided to listen to their customers and rebrand back to Craftsy. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be Craftsy again. I'm not sure how they're going to go forward with the, with the, um, with the platform, but uh, yeah, they're going to rebrand everything as Craftsy. Uh, Janet said she's got the book of Big Little Lies to oh. read. The new pattern of Starlock, I think it's called the Ellie dress. I'll have to confirm that. But it's really nice actually. Starlock have brought out lots of sort of sort of lots of patterns recently that I wasn't over keen on. Um, but that was the one I thought straight away I wanted to buy it. Morning Barbara. Hi Barbara. <laughs> oh you managed to look into a previous week, did you? <laughs> I'm glad you found us. How are you this week? How are things down on Hailing Island? So so that's the news about Blueprint and Craftsy. And the other thing that's been going on this week is all the Paris Haute Couture shows uh, have been putting up little videos. I think I posted the Dior one on Claire's Threads this week, but there are lots of other ones. And there's actually a calendar um, that I'll, I'll post up that uh, will tell you that has got a link to all the uh, Haute Couture shows as they come up, because they're all being very inventive about how they show their Haute Couture collections. And they are beautiful. And some of them are doing, um, uh, little uh, background interviews and things. Morning, Sue. Hi, Sue. Oh, I thought you'd be walking the dogs this morning. I didn't know if you'd join us. That's lovely. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. How are you? Oh, oh you have to go to the in-laws. Oh. <laughs> 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 Couldn't get out of it this week, then. <laughs> what are you going to do next week when we're not here? <laughs> nice to see you, anyway. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'll post the calendar with the Oakshire, um, uh Video films that they'll be posting so you can see them as they come up and they are beautiful they are so beautiful as you can imagine the other thing i spotted this week was that so direct have revamped their website oh brother's loving my new hair <laughs> thank you it's a bit short <laughs> i have to stop talking about how my ears but yeah i do feel so much better having my hair done thank you yeah, wasn't that, isn't the Dior video lovely, Barbara? It was so magical, wasn't it? Like fairyland, but with beautiful dresses as well. But there are some background ones as well um, that show how they were made in half scale and things like that. So I'll try and post those up as well during the week so you can see all of those. Um, as you know, if you went to the Dior exhibition, you'll have seen all their dresses are made at half scale, first of all, just to check all the proportions and the fabrics and colours. And yeah, so they've got a little video about that as well. Um, so yes, uh, so direct uh, website that has had a revamp. It's much quicker, uh, easier to use. I had a quick play around with it this morning, uh, and yeah, it looks a lot better. So as long as their um, uh, their service of sending out patterns is improved as well, we'll be quite happy, won't we? Because they did go through a bit of a um, <laughs> Claire saying we will be here next week with a wink. <laughs> that means you're watching the reruns, does it, Claire? <laughs> Or well, um, there's another wave and we can't open the sewing room. Oh yeah, of course, if there's, a, if there's, a, yeah, if there's a, another spike or something we have to close again, that would be so sad. But obviously we're, we're just going with all the, all the um, regulations and the advice and uh, seeing as I can get my nails done on Friday as well. That's very exciting. I'm getting mine done on Tuesday. Oh, are 
are you? That's exciting. Yeah. Hi, Marion. How are you? Oh, uh, Marion and I used to work together. Oh, say hello to Holly Ann from me as well. That's brilliant. What good news. Nice to see you. Um, the other news that this week is that Thread Festival, you know we did the, the virtual Thread Festival a few weeks ago uh, when it should have been a live show. They are going, they're planning uh, to have their live event on the 19th of September. Uh, it's going to be a one day show. Oh, well, Suzanne's talking to um, Susan about the tea dress, the, the uh, Soha 7 dress. Check the finished garment measurements, Susan, because often if they've allowed a lot of ease, it could be really big. So. Yeah, check the finished garment measurements would be my recommendation on that. Um, yeah, so Thread Festival is happening on the 19th of September uh, at Barnum Maltings and they're going to be running it because they've been running their Saturday markets and that's been going quite well so they thought they'd go for it. But just a one day show. So we're going to be involved in that. I'll be teaching, not sure what yet. They're just revamping it all because originally I was going to be teaching on both days and we're going to have a stand and things. So um, yeah, so I'll keep you updated on that because that's going to be lovely. Uh, I think the um, still in discussions about the other shows this year, so I'll let you know as I know as I know what's going on with those. But the first one will be the uh, Thread Festival at Barnum Maltings, which is very exciting. So lots of things are starting to happen. They start to open up now, which is really nice. Anyone been to the shops or uh, we haven't been to the pubs? No, we haven't braved the pubs or the restaurants yet. We just had a takeaway, <laughs> which was nice, but. Um, yeah, what else have you been up to this week? It's been lovely seeing everything that you've been making. And it's been great that you've been able to join us for all these weeks. This is actually our 16th Facebook Live. I can't believe it's gone, it's been so many actually. It's been fantastic, hasn't it, Ames? Yeah. <coughs> yeah it's been so nice to be catching up with you every week, but it's been 16 weeks. It's amazing. Um, and we've, you know, over, those, over the last 15 months, we've covered all sorts of things. We've done pattern matching, we've made lace knickers. But as I, I did write everything down this morning, I can't believe how much we've covered. We've done seams and hem finishes, we've looked at couture, we've done zips, buttons, buttonholes, welt pockets, we've worked with denim, uh, ruffles, pin tucks, shearing. So yeah, we've done so much over the last few weeks. We've celebrated virtual frock tails and V day and uh, the virtual thread festival. We've talked about the sewing bee every week. So goodness, we've just covered so much. Oh, Susan's saying her lace, her lace group's starting up again on Thursday. Um, although a lot of them not, won't return straight away. Oh, thank you, Janet. It's, it's gone so quickly, hasn't it? It has. 16 weeks. Oh, thank you, Jilly. <laughs> you can start watching all over again now. And we will, we will do some more Facebook Lives. Well, obviously, we can't do them regularly now. Oh, thank you, Susan. And, and you've got all those techniques to look back on now because they're all on YouTube so you can go back and look at anything you want to uh, go back and look at. Thank you Jo. It's, been a fa it's actually been fantastic, it's been a really great way of us all keeping in contact hasn't it? Oh Suzanne's going to be sad not to see everyone next week. But it's still hoping to come to Midhurst in September. Yeah, we're hoping that everything's going to carry on as well, um, Suzanne, you know, as long as we can, because obviously you've got to fly here. I mean, has anyone been flying from Guernsey to the UK yet? Or has they, they started that? I know they were flying to the other islands, but are they flying it to the UK yet? But yeah, we're going to start up slowly in the new sewing room. And I will post a video, you will see me this week, because I'll post a video, a uh, little video tour of the new sewing room. So <laughs> I think I'll just post that at 12 o'clock next Saturday. <laughs> So you can see around the, around the new sewing room and it has been really fantastic catching up with you every week and seeing what you've been doing but we'll have we'll be we will be uh, dismantling our home studio this week <laughs> taking down the lights and the and the backdrops and things and uh yeah it'll have our have our home back won't we it's quite it? exciting actually yeah it is <laughs> isn't it? it is we won't have to move the table every saturday to yeah <laughs> rearrange the whole we arranged the whole room every Saturday for the lives. But it's been great. And yeah, because any, any lives we do from now on will be at the sewing room. So we'll have a little area set up, especially for doing lives and filming. And we'll start filming again once things, you know, get back into it more for regular pattern, start filming more workshops again. So I've still got my list of things that we, we planned at the beginning. Um, and obviously we've learned so much 
I mean, technology is amazing, isn't it? I've done more Zoom calls and uh, uh, and chats with people than, uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. So this week I wanted to do a little demonstration. Um, it's just because uh, you know it's our last one this week, so uh, I was trying to think what to do this week. But one thing I did want to do was, um, you know, last week I um, my iron broke, which was very frustrating. Oh, so Janet's saying she's looked at the upcoming workshops and the ones she would like to do are already full. Um, and she's looking forward to the Overlooker Part 1 in September. Well, um, Janet, do keep looking because obviously um, some people um, aren't able to come to some of the workshops. They've got to travel a long way. So there may be some spaces opening up on the workshops. So do keep looking because any of the fully booked ones, as I uh, contact people, if they aren't able to attend, there may be some spaces that open up. So it's worth looking uh, every, you know, every few days or so. Um, to see uh, if there are any spaces come up. And Catherine, yes, <coughs> the online classes will still be available. Um, yes, I'm not. I'm, I'm, only going, I'm only going to build on those. They're going, to, they're going to carry on being available at all times because I know sometimes it's difficult for people to come, especially the couture jacket because it's um, one day every couple of weeks. So that can be a bit of a different one, difficult one to commit to. But yeah, they're still going to be available. So uh, yeah, you can still get those. Um, yeah, keep looking, Janet, just to see if people are unable to attend for various different reasons. Spaces will open up, um, and as we as, as things go back to normal, the the whole point of getting the bigger sewing room is to take one or two more people on the classes as well. But until we get going and uh, uh, get organised, I'm not going to be doing that yet. Suzanne's saying there are flights once a week to Southampton and to the Isle of Man. I just got a ferry booked, so hoping we'll be okay. Um, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing, isn't it, uh, Suzanne? We've just got to keep looking to make sure that there's no spikes and they have to start locking down again. Um, oh, at the moment, oh gosh, Suzanne's saying that at the moment she'll have to isolate when she gets back to Jersey, Guernsey for two weeks. Because she's oh, coming here. I'm coming here. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, there's flights five days a week to Southampton. Oh, that's it. That, the thing is that it, it changes every week, doesn't it, Suzanne? So as things get better, hopefully get better, as long as everyone, if, as long as everyone sort of looks after each other and follows all the rules, um, hopefully we can just move forward and uh, things will ease a little bit. That's interesting. There's no Airbridge with Guernsey. Hmm. <laughs> Airbridge oh. with all sorts of countries we're discovering this week, but not, uh, not Guernsey. That's interesting. So, um, huh? Nothing. You, just can't. you were just staring at the screen. I was just reading. And I'm sorry, I was just <laughs> reading. I get so, you know, I'm like, I get so easily distracted. That's one thing that hasn't changed over the last. You're not very good at my signals. You get weeks. distracted. I know. <laughs> Amy tries to tell I'll me. I'll tell you if there's a comment. Yes, tell me not to tell me how about you. So, anyway, I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do a little demo, but actually I did want to show you, we talked about my, my steam iron broke uh, last week, but um, it's gone off for repairs. One thing about uh, these Philips steam irons is if they're out of warranty, you can send them back for repair. So it's, it's, uh, it's really good for us to do that. So we've got another, we've got another one here. Uh, and I wanted to show you, um, with the shearing elastic last week, I said that once you've done it, if you steam it, it really goes, shrinks up. So I'm just going to put my iron on. Um, so that I, it's going to make a noise now, isn't it? So that I can just show you that before I do my other demo, which is the pocket, that pocket. Oops. Sorry. Oh, oh, the phone just fell out the thing. <laughs> so I'll just wait for my little iron to heat up because this was a little light on as well. It's okay. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's not. So this was the one that I did previously, and you can see it's all shrunk up nicely. And this was the one that I did um, in the as in the demo last week. Um, oh, Suzanne saying she's still coming. No air bridges because we have been clear for about seventy days. In the UK still has lots of cases. Completely understand that they can't even get to Jer to Jersey. I completely understand that. If you've been, if your country has been. Uh, uh, had no cases, you really wouldn't want to risk anything, would you? Um, so I'll just wait for that iron to heat up while we're chatting. Because um, once you've done the shearing, if you just steam it, it's, it really um, looks great. 
So I'm just going to wait for that to heat up, which obviously is going to take a couple of seconds. Those irons, they're fantastic, <laughs> but they always... Um, we should have take... prepped this in advance. I know, we should have done. I did think about it. And I but then it would have gone off. Yeah, it would have done. <laughs> <laughs> should have ironed the tablecloth as well a bit more, I think. Uh, yeah, the sea mines are great, but uh, they talk always take... Yourselves. Yeah, talk amongst yourself by the, heat, by the iron heats up. Um, they always take longer to heat up when you're watching them, don't they? Yes. Like, this is usually the point where I'll go and make a coffee yeah. or and then you come back Google and... something on my phone, <laughs> you research do that. something And then random. you come back and it's heated up and then turned off again. Yeah. Oh, is oh. that it? Oh, that's yeah. it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that was quicker than... This is my new one, actually. It's a bit lighter. So this is the um, bit of shearing that I did last week. And if I just go over it with the steam, you will see that it all shrinks up. That's what I wanted to show you at the end of the demo last week. So it's still lovely and stretchy, but it just makes it look a bit more even. So there you go, that was the end of last week's demo. Wow. <laughs> was it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> I think it was. Got, gets rid of all the lines from the fiction on pens as well. So there we go. That was the end of the shearing demo last week with my nice new iron. Um, I might need the iron for the pockets, I haven't decided. So. I want to talk to you about inseam pockets this week because we all love a pocket, don't we? And uh, pockets in dresses is an essential. I always think of Wendy when I think about pockets because Wendy always likes a pocket in her garments. And sometimes um, your pattern won't have a, your the pattern you're making won't have a pocket, so it's very easy to add one. You can use a pattern piece from. Um, Suzanne says yes, it was worth it. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> 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 it's always good to know <laughs> if you haven't got a pocket pattern you could just get one from another pattern and use that or you could make your own the main thing to think about is that you need it to be slightly bigger than your hand so you can get your hand in it and also you can just draw around your hand to make your pattern piece they can be any size really these um, pockets but that's roughly the sort of size that you'd want it to be add a seam allowance and then um, cut it out so you need two pocket pieces. If you've got a thicker fabric, I always suggest making the um, back piece from your matching fabric and the front piece from lining fabric. Then you're not quite so bulky, especially if you're making something with wool. Um, or oh, Victoria's just posted in mid her sewers page, but I'll come back to that. So these are my two pieces here. So this would be the front of a dress and the back of a dress. On the front, we're going to pin right sides together. We're going to pin the lining piece, and on the back, we're going to pin the uh, matching fabric right sides together. Now, when you're positioning your pockets, always think about where you want your pocket to be. So it's best to uh, pin your garment together uh, and then mark where you want your hands to go. It can be very easy to put them too low. I've done can't it. it Ames? Yeah, yeah. I've so, got my lovely dress. The pockets are way too low too and low. too small. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, the main tip with that be, would be to make sure you add a seam allowance. So you pin the lining fabric right sides together with the front piece of your garment and the um, matching fabric to the back right sides together. And if your seam allowances are one and a half centimetres, you're going to stitch this with a one centimetre seam allowance. I'm just going to do that, Amy. Don't we? You can come over if you want to. But, uh, I'm just going to stitch this with a one centimetre seam allowance. Janet's saying, "Is I love the, that colour fabric. Is it showing the true colour on screen? Yeah, it pretty much is true colour, Janet. Well, yeah, it's a very blue. royal blue. This mm. is what actually what we were making scrubs out of. <laughs> it's just a, a cotton. Royal blue cotton. So I'm just doing a one centimetre seam allowance. So you can see there. So this is if so whatever your seam allowance is, just sew your pockets on slightly inside it because you want your pockets to um, sit inside your garment. And you know I forgot to get a ditch for that. Go. So those are your pocket front and your pocket back. There might be one in the machine actually. No. Um, so that's your pocket stitched on. 
Now at this stage, I would suggest neatening the edges of just this bit here. So you could go to your overlocker and neaten this bit, or you could select the uh, stitch number 12. Uh, you don't want to come over for this one. Oh because I'm just going to neaten the edges. I just want to show you if you didn't want to um, if you didn't want to go to the overlock and just use your matching threads obviously I'm not using matching threads today use your uh, over edge foot and select stitch number 12 which is one of the overlock stitches on this machine on this machine so yeah the, whatever your overlock stitch is on your machine and then you could just neaten this edge I thought you broke a needle then <laughs> Hottest it's been in here today. No, I think I'm not. It's so hot in here. I'm neaten the edge with the um, over edge stitch. So that's just neatened right on the edge there. I might not be the right stitch number on this machine. But anyway. So just neaten that edge with the over edge stitch or on your overlocker. The next thing you're going to do is press the pocket out and we're going to under stitch here and so for under stitching I might have mentioned this before you know I like to use different feet for things but under stitching is basically where you're stitching the, um, uh, the pocket to the seam allowance to help it to stay inside your garment so it's not going to flick out and it should be a couple of millimeters from this edge here so you can do it by eye but I quite like to use a ditch foot and move the needle over so I'm going to put the ditch foot on the machine and then I'm going to go back to my straight stitch and I'm going to line up the guide in the foot. So the guide of the foot's going right where the um, seam is and I'm going to select, move the needle over to about 5.5. I think have a look, I might do it to 6 actually just to... Okay, so all I have to do now is run the guide along that seam. There we go. So that's now understitched. So it's holding the pocket inside. So I'll just do the same on this one. I'm just going to understitch this one. So you would neaten that little area and then understitch it. And I would probably press this which is on the garment, but this is cotton, it presses quite well. And using the uh, stitch foot just means that you can go a little bit quicker. There we go. So both of those pocket pieces are now stitched in place and understitched. The next thing you're going to do is place them right sides together. Now this is my favourite way of putting a pocket in, I have to say. When I get to a pattern and it says inseam pockets, I tend to ignore what they say and do <laughs> this way. Because it's just easier. Because there's all sorts of fancy. You know how patterns tend to do all sorts of fancy things. I do actually need to chalk pencil out of my box to... or. Um, I'm just going to pin the seam here. And is there a seam guide there as well, just so I can demonstrate? Oh. Didn't, put my, didn't put my box on the table today, so I think he's having to run around. Off. Suzanne's saying she'd never have thought to use that foot for understitching. Oh, it's great for understitching, especially around necklines and things like that. Now we're going to be stitching our seam allow seam at one and a half centimetres. And the important bit with this is knowing when to turn, so it's well worth marking it. So what I tend to do is mark myself a little line, one and a half centimetres there, and then I turn the seam gauge here. Actually, this is going to be a bit small, like that. So I know that I've got to turn there. Okay, so the same here. I'm going to mark my line up and then turn the guide this way. so that I can see exactly where I need to turn. It's really important that otherwise your pocket will be at a funny angle. 
there we go so we know I've got to turn there and there so you can use a chalk pencil or you could use a friction pen and actually I'm doing um, one and a half centimeter seam allowance but this this definitely needs to be one and a half centimeters because it's your seam of your construction but your pocket one could be smaller than that if you wanted it to be make your pockets any size you like There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch that now. So I'm going to move my needle back to the middle and put my normal foot back on the machine. And I'm doing one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So So um, this um, machine always stops with the needle down, which is very useful if you don't, or just try and set your machine so it all stops with the needle down, because when you get to this point here, you want to stop with the needle down and then turn. Very good. And then you can just go around your pocket. circle like this sometimes you find that it starts to pull a bit so just stop the needle down and just reset your fabric so you can go around the corner just reset it when it's a big sweeping corner you can just sort of turn it when it's a small curve I've cut this pocket quite a small curve so it can be quite tricky so we're coming up the other side and then we come towards the mark that we made earlier. So you know exactly where you're going to be turning. There we go. Turn the corner and stitch the rest of the seam. Okay, so we've got three questions. Oh. Uh, Susan is saying, would it be possible to make an index for the demos and the date? Uh, yes, I can do that for you. Yes. Uh, Coral yeah. said, any advice for putting pockets in stretch fabrics? Yeah. And Catherine's saying, can you use these pockets for stretch for trousers? Yes, you can. So, That's the Claire Shaper trousers do not have pockets. Oh, yes, definitely you could use these for, um, for the Claire Shaper trousers, Catherine. Um, yeah, I would definitely suggest doing an inseam pocket. You can do them higher up and put them so they're into the waistband as well if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, this, this is the trouser that I would use. Um, the pocket you would use, not the trouser. Oh, the pocket I would use, sorry. Sorry, I was reading the question as answer at the same time. But yes, this is a really easy one. If you're doing a pocket in stretch fabric, Coral, this area here, I would put a piece of woven interfacing or cotton uh, stay tape before you put the pocket in. So this area here, before you pin the pockets, put a bit of stay tape there so any fabric that's got a bit of stretch to it um, the uh, what you would do now there's two things you can do here now if I'm working with a fine fabric I would just um, overlock these fabrics together uh, all the way around and I've done a little video on turning corners with the overlocker do you know if you've seen this if you're overlocking around a, a corner like this when you get to it you just fold out what I call an ice cream cone like this and it makes it go straight like that. So if you're overlocking these two together, you'll need to fold out so that you can overlock around the corner. If you've got a thicker fabric, you might want to, um, you probably would have overlocked these pieces before you started. Um, and you want your pocket to be sitting towards the front like that. So you can see that's your matching fabric and that's your lining fabric underneath there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So if you wanted these seams to lie open, you'd need to do a little snip. And you'd need to snip at an angle through one of the seam allowances. There, so that then your seam can um, press open. Let me just turn this one around. Is that iron still on? No. And snip it into the corner there, so that then your 
seams can press open. So there's two ways to um, finish this depending on the fabric you've got. I'm just going to press this seam because then it will look really good. Lengthways. This way. Mm -hmm. I'm right handed and the iron's coming from the left. It's always a bit tricky, isn't it? Okay. So you can press the seam open. Because those little snips are on the bias, they're not going to fray. But generally, I would be doing this technique on a lined garment anyway. Otherwise, I would overlock the two pieces together and go all the way around. So you can see now, because we did that um, first seam, when we attached the uh, pocket pieces, we did the seam allowance at one centimeter, the pocket is sitting nicely inside there. There we go. So that's my favorite way of putting in an inseam pocket. I hope that made sense. Let me just move this line board out the way here. So I can show you from the right side. There. There, that's the pocket there. And all the nice, obviously you have matching understitching. <laughs> and from the wrong side. And that is the... Um, yeah, that's my favourite way of putting an inseam pocket. We did a did a, a whole lot of dresses for Goodwood once, and they were little tunic dresses for the for the kennels, and we had to put pockets in. So we had to find nice, quick ways to do it when you're doing sort of fifty odd dresses, and that's the that's the quick way. Okay, there you go. That's my demo for today. So finishing off the demo from last week and showing you how to do pockets as well. So it's good to get yourself a. Um, uh, a little pattern for these pockets, that little inseam pocket, and that can be your one you just go to. Oh, thank you. That can be your go to pattern. So you can put pockets in anything. We all like a dress with pockets. This dress has got pockets. This is the um, Sydney designer dress by Style Art, and I made this in a nice silk, and it's a very light, nice, floaty dress. I love this one. Thank you, Jilly. Thank you, Catherine. That's good. Glad you enjoyed that. Put pockets into anything. We all love a pocket. So get yourself a pattern and keep that to one side. Um, but when you want to put pockets into dresses or trousers or skirts, anything you like. So I'm going to get Amy to come in now because Amy's got a lovely cocktail for us this week. Nice summery one. She's run, run off to get the ice now. <laughs> <laughs> Did I surprise you by saying you're coming in now? Yeah. I don't know how I was going to talk for a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me move that. Sorry, Hi. guys. There we go. Hello, everybody. Hi. There we go. Ooh. So, oh, you I have frozen to the bowl. Oh, no. Oh, look, Charlie's arrived just in time for the oh. cocktail, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going well, thank you, Charlie, with the new place. Getting things sorted. Oh, Bonnie said she's something useful every Saturday. Never thought to oh, unsheath a pocket. There we go. So sometimes, yeah, you might see that type of construction in, in, a, uh, in a pattern, but if you understitch it, it will lay really flat. And if you do that first seam, just inside the seam allowance, that makes all the difference as well. Suzanne's saying hello. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne, you're wearing your Cali shirt. Today, this is my Cali shirt. Yeah. Your short one. My little one, so it's got a it's like longer at the back. back. This is a nice pattern. This is by Closet Case, and it's got a facing. It's got about three or four versions, mm. so you can do, there's three different lengths, I think there's two different collars, there's three different, you can do, um, this, is the, the this is the hidden placket, so the buttons are under there, um, but there's ones with visible buttons, or there's ones that's more like a tunic style, what's mm. it called with the, um, where it stops here? Oh, the placket. Is yeah, that, there's what? a placket there, there's, there's a hidden pla button placket, and there's a placket that stops to here oh. as well, so it makes like a tunic. Yeah, so yeah, that's a, mm. oh, I've got some planting my hair. That's what, that's what you, what you <laughs> I got part of the bush with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing, I, you were wearing the longer version last week I think, the striped yeah, one, that the was the one. longer version and I was wearing a pink 
pink pale pink yeah. one. So it's a good shirt pattern. Mm. We loved the Cali shirt last year. We made yeah, quite we a did. few. And you can have oh, the trouser. This trouser fabric is, of course, Bloomsbury Square. This nice, goes. isn't it? This is my favourite palazzo pant. I'll just put my Look how very wide, wide leg trousers. Um, it's uh, the simplicity. 8885 Simplicity mm. pattern. And I've made three or four pairs in this now. Um, and this is a Viscose um, from Bloomsbury. It also comes in navy. Um, yeah, and I, these are my go-to comfy trousers. I love mm. them, and they're really, really nice. They've got a side zip and a facing. Side zip and a facing. Nice and flat. My recommendation would be, I made them again in, because um, the facing just flips up, even if you stitch mm. it down. Um, so I made another pair in the winter out of some gabardine, and I actually doubled the, the width of the facing, so it's got a really nice wide facing around yeah. the top. So I would recommend doing that again. And you can um, top there is a there is a waistband option on the pattern as well, mm. and it also comes with um, a midi and a maxi skirt also on it's the a pattern. Good pattern isn't really it? great pattern. Yeah. yeah, actually, I want to make those skirts. Yeah, it'd be nice to, if those fit you really nicely here. The skirts yeah, would be great, wouldn't they? Yeah, and they're so mm. comfy. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, you can look. Yes, you can always go back and look up how to put in pockets. Mm -hmm. Very nice outfit. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Barbara. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's nice and yeah. shorter, isn't it? Yeah, I think what I realised when I made it though is I definitely need to do a full bust adjustment because mm. it just sort of comes here and then goes, mm. and is a little bit shorter. Sometimes it rides up, and then you can see my whole stomach, which isn't that yeah, attractive. It hasn't, it hasn't got a dart, has it? So There's you, no dart. Yeah. If so, you thought when you've got a larger bust, if you uh, having a dart makes a much better fit. So yeah. by doing it, if you put a dart in, it'd be yeah. really nice. So but otherwise, yeah. yeah, it's very comfy. I like it a lot. Number eight 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 five, I trousers. believe. Yeah, it's sure it either. Hold the line. <laughs> it's right here. There it is eight eight eight, 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 eight five eight. by Simplicity. <laughs> My go-to pattern. I love it. It's really good. Isn't yeah, it? I've had to do no adjustment to the pattern either. We didn't have to adjust the rise or anything, did we? No, it was it perfect. Went, it yeah. really well. Really good. And I know a few more people have bought that pattern since and mm. have said it's equally as good for them too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, today, because it's about to go heat wave in the UK, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, give you all um, a recipe for something refreshing. So this is my go-to sangria recipe. Um, Just perfect which, for summer. Perfect for summer. This can be made with red or white wine, depending on your choice. But I've gone for the classic red today. Oh, Janet, no, the trousers are 8885. Oh, the, sh the shirts, the uh, Cali shirt from Closet Case yeah. patterns. So, yeah, I don't think I have that one down there. No. <laughs> well, it probably is, but I can't. Mm. Yeah, the Cali shirt, K A L L E, mm. Cali. I think I've got some on my website, actually. Mm. I've got some. I, bought it. I was by extra for workshops. So, um, so Sangria. Um, there are lots of variations of a good sangria, but my this is my favourite. Um, all you need is some red wine or white wine. Um, mm. I've gone for a Rioja because it's Spanish, but you could use anything fairly light, like a Pinot Noir also works. Don't use your most expensive wines. Um, oh, just went for the tuna pizza and fancied some sangria. Yay! Oh, you so you have sangria with your pizza. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've gone for a Rioja. Um, you also need some brown sugar. If you don't want to use brown sugar and you want to lengthen the drink a bit, you can use lemonade. But I'm going to go brown sugar, orange juice, some oranges, apples, and some brandy. We haven't got much time. There's yet. not a lot, but it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm only going to make half the measurement, but I'll tell you the recipe for a full bottle. So mm. you would use one full bottle of red wine, 200 mils of orange juice, and 80 mils of of brandy three tablespoons of sugar that's if you're using one full bottle but i'm going to do the half so otherwise we won't get any work we done, won't so. get any work done so the <laughs> first thing actually not the wine first first thing is put some oranges and apples into a nice jug Ooh, this is going to be noisy and your sugar so i'm going for wow. half the recipe <laughs> um and then you're going to chuck some ice in So Bonnie's just saying that American designer Elizabeth Suzanne had to go out of business due to COVID and she's released many of her patterns, including the Clyde pants, for free online. Oh, that's interesting, Bonnie. Thanks for letting us know that. I might look that up later. You can mm. find out more on Instagram. That's mm. sad, isn't it, that she's had to go out of business, though. You're then going to add in your red wine. <laughs> We're going 
to have a fun afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, it was difficult last week after the vodka. It was very hard. We were actually drunk last week. That was so nice, that vodka. It went there. straight to our heads. Yeah, I had to have loads of tea. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, add in your brandy. So I've probably only got enough for one shot, yeah. Which is okay. why you need half the bottle. Yeah. Two shots for a full Two bottle. shots for a full, one shot for a... And then orange juice. So I'm going to want two of this. So it'd be four... Well, it's 80 mils. Oh, 80 mils. Yeah. Mm. Uh, sorry, 180 mils mm. for a full bottle. So I'm just doing half. Okay, and that pretty much is it. Make sure you give it a really good stir because you want that sugar to disintegrate and mix in. And like I said, if you wanted to lengthen this and make it a bit of a lighter drink, just top it with lemonade. It'll be really yummy. That sounds nice. I've had the vodka delivered today to try last week's. Yay! You're going to like it. You'll Barbara. like that one, Barbara. That is such a nice drink. Yeah, Mum's been going on about it all week. I, I feel like she wants more of them. I do. <laughs> uh, Julia. Oh, hi, Julia. How are you? Oh, I missed. Hold on. I missed Julia's. I can't get my uh, ice out. Oh, thank you, Julia. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. My ice has frozen to thank the Thank you very much. It's been great catching up with everyone this week. Just having a technical issue here with my eyes. Is that a technical tool you're using there? Yeah, my hairdresser <laughs> scissors. Charles has been drunk every Saturday since watching these videos. <laughs> well, we can't have ice in our glass. So basically, you want to get it really chilled. And this is something you can make it up and keep it in the fridge and mm. just keep going back to throughout the day. And it actually gets better and better. It's like Pims, where oh, yeah, by the end of the day, yeah. the fruit is as alcoholic as the drink. Yeah. Um, so then you get a glass, pop a slice of orange and an apple in there because you want to try and keep as much of the fruit in the jug to start with so that you can keep it, keep the flavours coming out into the drink. And there we go. There's your sangria. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's that, yummy. That's very nice. I mm. like that. Just having the extra fruit and the sugar in it makes yeah, it really nice. Yeah, and the orange nice. juice. Yeah, makes it really nice. And you're not really a red wine drinker. I like red wine, but I don't drink it very I don't often. Drink it very often. It's because you put it in the water dispenser <laughs> in the fridge door. You totally that could, That would be such a good idea. Yeah. Just go to the fridge for your sangria. It's so lovely. I was in Mallorca with my girlfriends last year, and that's all we drank. We were, had a villa, and we just drank sangria all day by the pool. And we yeah. just kept topping up the jug. And then now and again eating some of the fruit. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah, really refreshing. And like I said, if you don't want it to be quite as potent, mm. then top it up with some lemonade and that it will go is. a lot further. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, so there we go. Sangria. Oh, That's my go-to sangria yes, recipe. It's so happy summer drink. Yeah, yeah, and it's exactly the same with white wine. Um, although I would replace the oranges for lemons keeping the apples and also slice up some grapes. Really nice. Oh, that'd be in nice. a white wine one. Yeah. And then you could use lemonade or soda. I would not do the sugar in the white wine because it's already quite sweet. So what, just lemonade so what or soda. What white wine would you recommend? Pinot Grigio is really good. Just mm. a light a light white wine. Yeah. yeah so a Pinot no, Grigio is really lovely. Yeah, I think you'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Cheers, Pat. Thank you for joining us every week. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's been really great. It's been so lovely catching up with everybody. And, and uh, yes, yeah, so like I say, it's, um, Julia is saying, looking forward to seeing us face to face. We're yeah. looking forward to see all of you face to face as well. So. Yeah. I know, I see. I can't believe it's been 16. I know, 16 weeks. Crazy. No, it's, we've, had, we've had quite a journey. This quite a journey. Like, quite a journey. So much has happened in those 16 <laughs> weeks, I can't tell you. I know, it has, isn't it? Because we started off just thinking that like, you were going to do sewing every week. And yeah, I thought I'd have had a brand and... new wardrobe by now. Mm. <laughs> I have. No, we've run out of clothes. I don't think I've made anything of oh, the mask. Suzanne's saying she loved the mix of sewing and cocktails. Thank you for keeping our spirits up. <laughs> You're welcome, You're Suzanne. Welcome. Yeah. I'm glad that you oh. like the cocktails and that you're learning something. I do have yeah. many more in the bank, but it's often quite a late thing at the end of the week. I'm like, oh no, what cocktail? Yeah, then we have to Oh, I can't get those ingredients. Mm. <laughs> so we'll have to add them to every one of our lives, whatever we're doing. Yeah, whatever we do, yeah, there'll, be we do there'll be a cocktail along for the ride. Oh, thank you, Sally. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'll see you in a few weeks as well, won't we? That would be so lovely. Oh yeah, it's a bonus. It's a bonus having a cocktail, isn't it, Catherine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, just, just a little extra. Yeah. Well, I Thank often sew with, with wine or something, so why not sew with a cocktail? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think cocktails. I think they go fun. hand in hand. Yes. 16 is amazing. I know, 16 weeks. Yeah. yeah. The first one we did, we were in the in the old sewing room. 
Yeah, that wasn't that, that first week. Yeah, that wasn't the, one of the Saturday nights. It was. Though. Was it? Yeah, our first one was oh. up there. We did it in Midhurst. I know we did the, um, the sort of like saying we were closing the sewing room. Down yeah, there. but then we did our first live there. Yeah, and then we did one back here when we had really bad broadband. And uh... it must be a regular feature at workshops. Yeah, the cocktails. <laughs> yeah, well, we have our own kitchen now, Sally, yeah, so, so we, we definitely could. could. Yeah. Oh, Sophie's got her masks. You're welcome. Yay, that's good. <laughs> oh, it was nice to see you last night, Sophie. We did Zoom last night. And Jane, I'll see you next weekend. Yay! Very excited. Do we need to say what else we've got next Saturday for the ladies on the weekend? Well, yeah, school? if you're coming next Saturday, mm. um, we are suggesting that you might want to come and look at Bloomsbury Square's new home. Mm. Um, so me and Victoria will open up because I think we finish at four. So if you, you fancy a little trip down to Bloomsbury Square, then uh, yes, anyone coming to the sewing room at the weekend is more than welcome to come and check out there's quite a lot of nice new goodies and you can see that you can see and it's a really lovely big space so you can oh. socially distance quite easily yeah um, so that'd be lovely yeah so we're going to try and keep that as a regular thing for people that are coming coming to sewing for like a weekend sewing school yeah. or a three-day sewing school mm. then you can pop down to bloomsbury square for a vip visit yes <laughs> So, Margaret, oh, thank you, Margaret. It's been lovely seeing you, everyone. I'll see you next weekend. And Jilly on the 27th. Sally Scott, is it open next Saturday? Yeah, we'll be open next Saturday, Sally. Um, after and, uh, the sewing school. After the sewing school. So, we can make an exception for you. I know you're not, you're not on the sewing school, I don't think. But, yeah, you're more than welcome. Just send us a message. Uh, so, Barbara's saying, I think that cocktail, icing on the cake. Ah. <laughs> she takes her down the garden. Very sensible, Barbara. <laughs> It's a nice little wind down, isn't it? After the after the madness of a live, yeah. <laughs> we often go and sit in the garden afterwards, don't we? Just to finish our little drinks. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so we then have to tidy up the whole room so we can get back to doing what we're doing. Because yeah. The table's in the middle of the room. Oh yeah, Jane. I heard home. that you're gonna have to drive back home. Can you not come and stay in the that B and B? Yeah. Hopefully? Can you stay at Spread Eagle, Jane? Yeah. Treat yourself. This is my Bloomsbury lining. Oh. oh, you're welcome, Catherine. Yeah, we like to wrap them all up and keep them special. Yeah, so it's like a present. <laughs> yeah, it's like a present. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely lining you bought. You got some Brem silk, didn't you? Really oh, was lovely. that for your blazer? Really lovely, lovely lining. Mm. We That's like nice. a Brem silk. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's all we've got for you this week. Mm. It's quite sad thinking it's going to be our last week doing this. Oh, yeah. But things are moving on. The good thing is, the reason that we're not doing it again is because things are moving on and things are starting to go back to normal. So that's all good news, isn't it? Uh, and it, well, now, we know, now we know how to do these lives, we can do them you know, and, and film videos and things. So, um, yes, yeah, Sally's back at the beginning of August. Uh, oh, Sue, Sue's got a, a, a teddy bear picnic. picnic. How lovely. Oh, you're welcome, Barbara. You'll get back to sewing. I know a lot of people have lost their sewing mojo. Some people have made loads of things, but it's been difficult for some people as well. So hopefully once we get back into a routine, especially when evening classes start again, Barbara, um, and you can come back to evenings and do things every week, that'll be great, won't it? So, but yeah, as I say, thank you for joining us, everything. I think that's all we've got. Unless anyone's got some burning questions you'd like to ask me before we disappear? Spread Eagle not open till the end of the month oh. according to their website. Oh, okay. I thought you could go this quarter open. Famous Court's open. Yeah. Have you checked for Swan? Or Airbnb. Have a look on Airbnb, Jane. Mm. Is the, I wonder if the church... I'll have a look, Jane, and see yeah. if I can find anything. We'll find you something. Yeah. Uh, Catherine said, for trousers, should I use the Brem silk as an interlining or make two pairs of trousers? You can do either. I quite like if you're using Brem silk to do uh, so as an underlining, so stitch them together and then make the trousers up. That's quite nice. Uh, if you're going to do a loose lining, I would just do it to below the knee. You don't need to do it sort of all the way down. Just sort of just about below the knee. So either, but I do like uh, underlined um, trousers. So I would, with bone silk, it feels so nice against your skin. Make two bits of trousers, uh, yeah, underline it first. That'd be great. Ah, thank you, Claire. Mm, it has been Claire. great. I'm going to start watching the reruns next week. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the time, you'll be teaching. I won't, yeah, I will be. And uh, I tried to have a look at the very first one we did, which was the pattern matching one, just this morning, because I couldn't remember what we'd talked about. And the, it was, we had the pixelation, because we did a very good Wi-Fi, and the table, we had the mat on the table, so it was like a yeah. Oh, yeah. Swimming. Oh, Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> We're looking forward to having you back. Yeah. Wait till you see the new sewing room. Oh, I know, it's looking really good, I have to say. I went in... Last week I yeah, popped up. Last week. I've not been able to go up there and help because I'm making too many masks. 
but I did pop up last week and it was all sort of chaotic and I'm going on Wednesday and it's going to be all beautiful. It's going to be all painted. It all looks, painted so, it looks and we really can nice. put all the furniture into where it's supposed to go. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So very exciting. Very right, and then, exciting. then we'll do a video. I might be able to get that done on Wednesday, hopefully. We'll see how we Let's do. not push it, Mum. <laughs> There's a lot to do on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Susan oh, thank you all for being regular viewers it's been so lovely seeing everybody every week so yeah I think that's all we've got this week isn't it? I think so it is. So bye everybody bye -bye. thanks for coming <laughs> enjoy coming. your sangria yes enjoy your sangria go <laughs> make yourself a sangria yeah uh, Barbara said she can't wait to visit Bloomsbury you wait, you wait, it's, it's amazing. We're going to be opening on Wednesdays regularly, yeah. um, probably from September, yeah. and then one Saturday a month as well. So mm. if you're, but yeah. And then special VIP visits. Special VIP schools. visits for sewing yeah. schools. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Suzanne. Look forward to seeing you in September. Bye, Pat. Bye, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much for keeping us going through the uh, 16 weeks. And I look forward to seeing you all at the same room sometime soon. Bye. Bye, everybody.